And welcome back guys. So we're over here playing the Alliance game 2x PvE free VIP TP. Now they're talking about doing some possible nerfs to the server because people are complaining about how easy it is to get stuff. Which I would usually say that's a good thing. But yeah, you know, server. They would love some more server pop. And I would love it if a big clan joined this server. And on purge they actually sat there and defended their base. And actually gave that village group a run for their money. But this is me. So today we're going to be talking about uh, what I do on a daily basis regarding this server currently. Now let me turn that master volume on. It gets quite annoying hearing 50 asses, otherwise known as horses, click clapping with their feet. So every time I get on, and I'll start picking up some horse poop if the server hasn't restarted yet. And when the server does restart, I have to shoot each horse in the ass cheek or make them lose some kind of health. And there's 50 of them. I didn't realize I had 50 of them. And I have to damage them a little bit just to get them to start pooping again. Now, as you notice, the Rust devs tried doing a Rust update to nerf horses. And they have broken the shit out of them. They are unrideable at this point. How are they unrideable? Well, the horses don't like going up hills. Period. They just sit there. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'm not sure what the hell they did to the horses. But the horses look at the hill like, Doi. And they'll just sit there being stuck trying to go up a hill. Same thing with trying to go up a ramp. The horse will sit there, look at the ramp like a complete dumbass, and then go up the ramp and it'll get stuck on the ramp. So when I built this horse farm, I had to get my lovely elevator in place, and then I had to walk them up here, and they would not go through the double door frame with a trough halfway through it, they would just get stuck. So, I had to build this one with completely no double door frames. Alright. So, I finally get horses in here. I have no idea that I have 50 horses in there because I literally didn't count them at all. And someone's like, wow, there's a lot of horses here. How many are there? And I start counting how many horses there are, and there's 50 horses in here. So, I think they're going to be doing some nerfing on this server, where there's going to be like a number cap of how many horses, so I suggested one layer, so this would cut down how many horses there are. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So basically 22 horses on this level. So allowing us to have 22 horses and not having another 22 up there, you, you kind of get the idea. Is, uh, I, don't, I think I've said, uh, counted correctly, but you get the general idea. Uh, the last count, there was 50 horses in here. Not sure if that's exactly the amount of horses that are currently in here, but you, you get the general idea. There's probably going to be a nerf to horse farms on this Pacific server because of people are getting scrapped way too easy. And it's making a lot, you know, what happens when you join a server and you finally get everything you want? You don't get back on the server because you have nothing to look forward to. So, yeah, they're working on doing some nerfing and figuring out, you know, trying, they're not trying to, like, they're trying to make sure that they do the correct nerfs that people still want to continue to play the server. But not nerf, to, not nerf it to a point where people don't want to come back. You kind of get the idea of trying to find the right balance. So, yeah, there's talks about the nerfing the horse farms on this server. Uh, regarding me getting low-grade fuel and stuff like that really easy, there's no talk about nerfing that at all, because that's just part of Rust at this point. <laughs> it's really easy to get. So, that's what's going on with the horse farm. Uh, regarding the horse's poop rate, uh, Rust devs tried making it so that the horse stopped crapping like every other hour. It has not had any effect on this server. 
Unfortunately, it seems like the horses have diarrhea, or like really bad diarrhea on the server. So, I'll come back in like 30 minutes, and the floor will be covered in shit again. So, it's just like, yikes. So, we got our furnaces out here. I'm actually going to choke off the supply of wood to those now. Okay, that's off. Come over here. We got the auto sorting system we come over here it comes into the farm area and on this server you can buy pump jacks for 16,000 scrap which is nice because then I don't have to run over the water treatment and babysit the pump jack and they actually allow you to lock them which is nice uh, so yeah I tried doing the quarry right now that one only produces stone so it's not really much help because I'm not doing anything with stone right now I'm focusing on stuff regarding high qual why am I focusing on high qual? Yes. Well, I'm building a prayer space this way. So before I even cover that subject, let's go ahead and talk about if I was to play next wipe. Now I know I talked about not playing next wipe. I talked about finishing out the rest of the month on the server until they wipe the blueprints. And you know, plans might change. I might play next wipe uh, currently looking for a group to be part of because you know if i can build a team or become a part of a group we can start actually doing more we can actually build bigger rp towns or even bigger purge bases so you kind of see where i'm working on there uh village group like i said i didn't like that they intentionally fed me misinformation where we were supposed to be building down at ranch, they built somewhere else, and, you know, it just felt like I was kicked out of the village. This wipe, they decided not to do a village, and decided to build a clan base. I don't have a problem with clans being on a PvE server, as long as they're not sitting there going, Oh, we're the best, oh, we're, we're the ones in control of the server type shit. I don't like that shit, that's a great way to encourage me to leave the server. So, just keep that in mind, when clans join a PvE server. Like, seriously, no one likes that shit. People love clans that join PvE servers, but they're not going to like that negative behavior of, oh, we're the best, we'll do whatever we want, this is our server type shit. No one likes that shit. Get lost. <laughs> so, just keep that in mind. Uh, so, yeah, you got my normal farm, it cost me an arm and leg because it's not flatland. This fucking map is tiny. Tiny, tiny. So... Yeah, there's not a lot of places to build on this map. Different, but I don't think it was really worth, uh, you know. I don't think it was really worth doing this map, but that's just me. <sighs> it's still not done processing. All right, so let's go talk, uh, show what I'm working on out in the sea. So, currently bummed out because of what they did to Fallout 4, the next-gen update. Uh, what did they do? Well, they broke the Fallout London DLC that a mod team has been working on for over eight years. And they were supposed to release the Fallout London on April 25th, but Fallout 4 devs decided to drop an update slash add things to the game, which apparently broke the DLC that was supposed to come out that they've been working on for over eight to nine years. And I was really hyped to have, you know, be able to access a free DLC made by modders because it's something different, it's something that's never been done before, as far as I know of. You know, you all have these little mods that you can install from the dev store for Bethesda, I can never say the game company's name correctly, but uh, Bethesda, and, you know, these are all verified mods that you can use, you know, it's, you, know, you got the under pressure mod where you can make newspapers using the uh, conveyor system, but I noticed in the conveyor system that a lot of, like, the mods are broken. Scrap all mods work great. I'm like, oh, thank God, those still work. All the mods that I usually use are still working. Oh, thank God, just crossing my fingers that nothing breaks. But yeah, everything else 
is broken. Like, conveyors are broken and that kind of shit. So it's like, really? So, this is what we got for our town. There was a road down there that went that way. Not sure what happened to it. We're not sure if the tool cabinet ran out of resources. I put enough resources in each one of these tool cabinets to last until Wednesday, because Wednesday is the purge for this server. So you can kind of see why I've been spending a lot of time out here working on stuff. And I'm about to show you the purge base. Now, the purge base is usually for a clan that is building on like a 5x server. And this is a 2x server, so you have to understand that uh, me building this purge base here, it's supposed to be a clan base that's supposed to h handle you know, 25 people and there's only one person building it. We'll find out if, we, if I bit off more than I can chew. So, I decided to build this thing entirely out of high qual. Now, high qual is usually kind of difficult to get on our Rust server, but this one, it's kind of easy to get it on. So, seeing that this server is a 2x server, all I have to do is go over to Bandit Camp, take the fertilizer, sell my fertilizer, turn that into scrap, then go buy a bunch of high uh, 16x scopes, and then take those to the recycler, grind those down, and then I have high call that way when the excavator is being used by someone else. Or I can take my diesel, go over to the excavator, run that when no one is on the server. So I like to do this around 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning when there's no one on the server run the excavator, and run the high-quality quarry. That's why I'm getting, you know, I don't have to sit there and babysit it. But you kind of get the idea of what I do, is I run these machines slash monuments that produce what I need at times when there's no one online. <laughs> so right now, all my focus is currently going into the base we're looking at now. And as far as I know of, no one has built a base of this size on water foundations. So, technically speaking, I would be the first person on this server to build a base that is going to be able to absorb. Uh, this is a 300 rocket raid when this thing is built. As far as I know of, I'm the only one attempting to build a base of this size that it will take... 300 rockets to reach the core to raid period you, you get the idea it's something that we'll find out if I manage to complete like I said I am currently building it on a high call we'll see if I am able to do that it's looking good so far but things could change rapidly if I'm not able to get access to the giant exavir or high quality quarry uh, please remember when joining this server that there are only two PvP zones currently PvP zone is air is uh, on site and large oil rig, everything else is PvE. We had two players on the server earlier, one called the Gaming Fish, and the other one was Aunt Jamie or something like that. And they came onto the server saying that they read the rules and they're over there killing people, slash killing on site people at Giant Excavator and saying, You shot at me first. There's an NPC there, dumbass. So all the monuments have these custom NPCs, and they should have known better that there are NPCs. You know, the little blue scientists, they're always at Giant Exavir. The only difference is there's these orange NPCs, and then you've got the blue NPCs, and they hold shotguns. <laughs> yeah, so it's a hell of a trip trying to go over there, clear that, run it, have those little fuckers respawn, clear it again. So, yeah, so far it's taken me up to almost eight hours of running the excavator to get enough high quality to build this far. Just keep that in mind. So, a lot of my time currently is going into building this purge base and being ready for purge. So, this way I can absorb some of those rockets from the village group because they always seek out large bases. And it's kind of hard to continue going around the, the map raiding if you're all out of raid supplies. So, you kind of see what I'm doing. I'm kind of taking one for the team here. I have not decided if I'm going to fill that 
uh, the loot room for the open core up with loot yet. Uh, all I know is I have started building something, and then I might as well try to finish building it at this point. So, that's what's going on. This is why I have not done any gameplay of me playing Fallout 4, the next-gen update yet. I've been busy building that. And then after that spilled, and I've got turrets wired up and everything, and because I can't do stone walls on the outside, I'm going to have to do a china wall. And as far as I know, no one's ever done a china wall on the water before. On water foundations. So I'm definitely going to have to put like turrets facing in from the china wall. So that if you try to swim underneath the china wall, you're going to get shot by turrets. So clearly I'm going to have to improvise with that china wall. I'm going to have to do sand turrets. You, you kind of get the idea. I have to do a lot to fill in all the loopholes of getting in there. And then, when I'm done with that... I'm going to try to build this out as much as I can with resources. Now, you said, there, why bother? You're going to have that. So, you need to understand from my point of view, I really don't care if someone was to raid into my base and steal my C4, my rockets, my raid supplies, or, oh my god, he took all my gunpowder, my low-grade fuel. I don't really, I'm not really bothered with that. It's just stuff I can replace later. From my point of view, is and this is some this is a tactic I used on other Rust servers. My treasure is the base itself. You can never take that base. You could sit there and TC grief it, but unless you actually buried that TC somewhere where they're not gonna find it, it's like in the honeycomb somewhere, and they just give up trying to find the tool cabinet, in the end of the day you still have your base. And in the end of the day that's all I really care about at that point. And uh, they sit there going, oh, we have your loot. And they're looking for a reaction. I just trying to say that, you know, ah, ha, ha, come raid us, come get your stuff. And they want that. So how do you counter that? Just go, I don't know. I still have my base. I'm happy with that. They look at you, they come back, they try to take your base, and they continue to waste their raid supply. That's how I deal with that. <laughs> because as they're over here raiding that, thinking that has good stuff in it, they're wasting all the raid supplies, and that's one less base they'll hit on the server. So, keep that as a point of perspective. So, like I said, I have not decided if I'm going to fill that up with loot. Right now, I'm spending a lot of my time farming to build it. So, that's what's going on with that. So, I've got my horse farm base to maintain. I have my little shop base to to maintain, which no one's buying from, which is a little concerning. Uh, I have my car base I have to maintain, my farm for growing food to maintain, I have these roads to maintain, and all this to maintain, and that. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of see why I've been kind of busy, and I have not had time to do the Fallout 4 DLC yet so anyways make sure to like button make sure to subscribe button at least you're on the same page of what i've been working on and i'll see you guys again soon